Question four, let F be continuous from zero to eight, inclusive. The graph of function F is shown. Let A equal the integral of F. So that means if it's asking any questions about A, we're talking about the area. Question A, circle the statement, the correct statement below regarding the value of A of 4.2. So if you put 4.2 in for x, then that means that we are trying to find the area under the curve from 0 to 4.2 of this function. And if you look from 0 to 4, this is all above. And then from 4 to 4.2, it's certainly below. There's much more area above than below. So we are saying that the area, it has to be positive from 0 to 4.2. Question B, circle the correct statement below regarding the value of A prime. Well, the second fundamental theorem of calculus says that A prime of x is just going to equal f of x times the derivative of x. You put this x in for t, and then take the derivative of x, which of course is going to be 1 in this case. So a prime of x is just f of x. In other words, this is looking at the y value on the graph. At 4.2, this y value is negative. So a prime of 4.2 is the y value of f. And that is negative in that case. So that is single y. C, circle the choice that correctly completes the following sentence. The function a attains its maximum. So keep in mind that whatever function a is, a prime is equal to f, which is this graph. So we're looking at a prime in this picture. We want to know what the parent graph was before we found the derivative of that. So this maximum is going to happen. Let me just go back a second and show you what, uh, what maximums happen. Let's say this is the original curve. A maximum happens when f prime goes from increasing, I'm sorry, when f prime goes from being positive to negative. And this graph that we see here, and that f could be anything, but in this case we're saying a prime, so that relates to this graph. f and a prime are the same in this context. I'm sorry if I'm talking gibberish. It is really late. I'm a little tuckered. So since f is the derivative, it is positive all through here, and it's negative all through here. When does it change from being positive to negative? Changes right here at 4, which means the original graph, not f, but a, has to have a maximum at 4. D which is a uh, circle the choice that correctly completes the following sentence. The function a, that's the original graph, is decreasing. Decreasing means that it's going down from left to right. And it's concave down on the interval. So to go down and be concave down, it's going to look like this. So that's going to happen when f is less than 0. And when f prime is also less than 0. So a is decreasing. That means f is less than 0. Keep in mind that f is the equivalent to me saying the derivative of a. Concave down means the second derivative is less than 0. And since this function 
that's graphed is named f, then that's saying the f prime is less than zero. Those two pink statements are saying the same thing. The two blue ones are saying the same thing. So let's look at our picture. Um, when is a prime less than zero? Keep in mind this whole graph is a prime. It's less than zero here. But when is f, when is a double prime less than zero? That means when is this curve going down from left to right? What's well, going down from left to right to here to here? The overlap of those answers is going from four to six. So I would say part uh, answer three is the correct one. That's when this original function that we don't see graphed is decreasing and concave down.